Yeah, it's already five minutes up. So I think uh, we can go ahead and start, Navina. Shall we go ahead, Navina? So good good evening to everyone. So welcome to CT. And uh, today we have we are here for the webinar that is for MA in Education and Technology. And we have the faculty from the uh, from the program. And we have um, Amina Charania and Anil Maman who will be discussing with you and talking to you about the program. And I'm handing over to them. So please. Sure. Thanks, Navina. Navina is a communication expert at our center. Uh, my name is Amina Charani. I'm faculty and lead for this program. We also have Professor Anil Mamin, uh, who's the chief designer and faculty for MA in Education and Technology. And we also have Durba Sarkar, who is also a part of the core team of MA in Education Technology. Uh, so, um, we can start now. I think uh, what we usually do is uh, we just go through a brief uh, uh, presentation, what we call very brief, and then maybe we can pause and take questions. And it could be uh, we were expecting a small group, which is here, uh, so we can have some discussion and uh, you know one to one uh, uh, solving of queries. Uh, so Anil, do you want to go ahead and start? Go ahead, uh, Amina. I'll take the questions. Sorry. Yeah. Sure. Um, so I'm sure you have all uh, are very much aware of the Tata Institute of Social Sciences and its background. Uh, so we don't need to spend time on it. But if you have any questions and if you are able to answer, we can take it later. Um, so I think uh, Tata Institute of Social Sciences has a long history, a very first university uh, deemed university uh, set up in 1936 by the uh, by Sardor Abji Tata uh, uh, and then uh, it's taking its form in uh, various uh, campuses a very first social uh, work uh, department in India so that's what it is known for uh, a very strong field action projects um, and a vibrant campus life. Um, we have uh, a main campus in Mumbai. We have two campuses in Mumbai, uh, back to back. It's in the same area. And uh, then we have a campus in rural Maharashtra, a campus uh, in Hyderabad, and a campus in Guwahati, Assam. Um, let's talk a little bit about the center which hosts uh, this program. So Center of Excellence in Teacher Education is the youngest center uh, on TIS campus. Um, and it started in 2015 with a large um, field action project with Tata Trust and Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And it was on education technology. I think it's the first time in the history of India that an academia got into education technology for the first time. Uh, with such a large field action project, I mean. Uh, so that's where it sets the uh, history of uh, our center. Uh, currently, the center has a lot of field action projects uh, that you can see here. And maybe you can also check the center's website uh, and on maybe also join LinkedIn and other social media handles, which uh, where we post a lot of updates. Uh, besides MA in Education Technology, the center also has MA in Education, BA Demid, MPhil, uh, now MPhil is no more there, uh, but PhD in education and about out of, uh, I think, 20 to 25 students, the, about six to seven students are concentrating on education technology for their PhD. Uh, the center is known for its collaboration with a lot of state governments and also uh, international uh, academic partners. So we can go next and maybe, yeah. So let's come to the MA in Education Technology program. This is uh, based on the national education policy for one year masters. We started this one year masters program, uh, uh, MA in Education and Technology program, which brings a unique blend of education 
and education technology, which are very core uh, competencies and core knowledge areas in the center together. So this is one year full-time program for those who would like to complete in one year. Uh, but uh, many uh, working professionals who are working full-time, we recommend that they take this program as part-time. That means you can complete it within two to three years. Uh, the delivery is flexible, it's blended, uh, and we will talk a little bit about it. The overall aim of this program that we started last year, I think we have been uh, working on this program for last three years with a lot of other academic partners uh, nationally and internationally and with a uh, few government partners uh, and industry partners. Uh, we've been working on this for last three years. We were able to launch it last year and we completed one batch of MA in education technology this year. Uh, with uh, the partial batch, uh, uh, we'll still be with the second batch because they opted for part-time option. Uh, the overall aim is, uh, I think this is the only uh, very unique MA in education technology program, even the name suggests it's very unique in India, which basically brings a holistic perspective to education technology. It's not just looking at uh, digital e-content, e-learning, but it brings a holistic perspective in the sense uh, it looks at uh, equity, sustainable perspectives. It looks at design. It looks at policy. It looks at uh, implementation and adoption on ground. So that's how it brings a holistic perspective. Um, let's go to the next. I think slowly we will unpack what we mean by holistic perspective. Um, I think this kind of a program in this, uh, uh, our center has a history of last eight years in education technology, uh, but within the TIS uh, ecosystem also, this program fits very well because this program has a, uh, has a huge practice component where we allow students uh, to uh, basically create, design, and use uh, whatever they are creating uh, or designing or developing within their working lives or within the context which is practice-oriented. Uh, and that also kind of fits very well with the uh, philosophy and the ethos of uh, Tata Institute of Social Sciences. Uh, very importantly, it uh, brings a lot of perspective in equity, social marginalization, uh, working across uh, school education and higher education and working across, across classes and very critically understanding the space of education technology globally and in Indian ecosystem. Um, let's go to the next slide. Yeah, so these are uh, some of the... Uh, collaborations that we have internationally, especially uh, in the South, global South context also, uh, and also a lot of geographies in India, uh, where we have field presence and research and teacher professional development present when it comes to education technology. Let's go to the next slide. Yeah, these are some of the field action projects that uh, the center has undertaken since last, since last eight years, uh, eight to nine years. Yeah. These are some of the awards that we have uh, gathered in the area of education technology, uh, starting from UNESCO to the National uh, Northeastern uh, HCL. Uh, and I think uh, this comes with a blend of research and uh, field ground practice and teacher professional development, a combination of, of all these three. Yeah, let's go to the next slide. Yeah, let's go to the next slide. Yeah, so this is the course structure. It's a one year, 42 credits. Uh, and those who would like to take in a part-time mode, actually we would recommend, based on a first cohort, we would recommend those who are working full-time should actually take this course part-time. It's very difficult for learners who are already working full-time to then take a full-time master's program. I mean, this kind of a master's program. Uh, so, uh, but this is the course load, whether you take full-time or part-time, this is what you have to complete. Uh, this brings uh, education core courses, which is 12 credits, which spans to around five courses, uh, which are spread. We will talk about the courses uh, in a little while. 
then it talks about the core courses uh, it, it offers core courses in education technology then comes an elective basket where students uh, can uh, select based on their uh, choice and uh, what they really want to concentrate so we'll show what these electives are or uh, we do not have a traditional thesis but uh, what we call a capstone research project which basically comes towards the end of the program but we start preparing students right from the start so this is kind of a culmination of the courses that you have taken and uh, what would you like to basically culminate all your knowledge that you have gathered in the courses in something which is more practical for example in our last batch uh, the students made uh, an education technology artifact and then uh, they used a design based research to make an artifact and then see its efficacy on ground uh, one of the students also took a traditional route of doing a, a research where the student actually used two different kind of teaching pedagogies to teach computational thinking or machine learning. So these are some of the, and seminars are two credits uh, where we bring a lot of global experts, a lot of industry experts and also international experts to come and speak uh, with the entire education technology ecosystem in the country, we call everyone. And then we allow these experts to have a close group discussion with the MA education and technology students. So there is a one-to-one -one, uh, communication with them. Yeah, please let's go to the next slide. This is the course uh, component. So education core courses are key ideas and concepts in education, which also brings philosophy in education. Uh, and history of education is included here. Learners and learning comes with uh, a lot of uh, background in developmental psychology and how children and adults learn. Um, some of the assignments of this education core courses also brings in aspect of education technology. For example, in learners and learning, uh, we talked about how children learn and the processes and a lot of readings around it. But in the assignment, the students were actually doing experiments with children of two different age groups and do two different learning levels, and uh, but uh, doing a task in education technology, uh, you know. So then uh, that education technology aspect comes in. Policy in education, social marginality, uh, inclusive education, universal design, uh, principles, curriculum, school and teachers, uh, the concepts of these. Then the core education technology, basically it comes starts with a foundation course in teaching and learning with technology uh, in education and 21st century skills, emerging technologies. Then we also allow uh, students to basically pick up one of the uh, courses which brings educational technology with a subject pedagogy. So the subject pedagogy, for example, in social sciences, sciences, uh, languages, uh, also mathematics. Learning design with technology uh, basically goes through all the different kind of learning design uh, theories and learning design, um, instructional design uh, kind of uh, models and frameworks uh, uh, which are globally known. And it allows the students to design a product or design a curriculum, Anil teaches this course or design an assessment around this. Product management is a very unique course that, uh, you know, is uh, basically very much linked to learning design with technology. Education technology policy and the adoption. I think th this kind of a course, I don't think anyone else in the country has it, uh, which uh, basically looks at policy in education technology globally uh, and the adoption frameworks globally, and then it narrows down to the its relevance in the Indian context and also ties with the policy in education in general. Elective courses, computational thinking. We have an industry expert who comes in to teach this course. Also, product management is uh, taught by one of the leading industry in education technology. Mentoring for teacher professional development, technology enabled learning. It brings a lot of uh, community of practice and designing teacher learning support when teacher engage with their own professional development and assistive technology, uh, which also is taught uh, by some of the educators who are into practice of assistive technology. These are some of the 
uh, very key people in the country who actually run assistive technology in their own schools. So you will see as the courses are very diverse and it is very holistic, it is taught by some of the key leading experts in the country in this area. Um, so it has a blend of people coming from industry, people coming from academia, people coming from action and practice from ground. So it's kind of a wonderful blend. Uh, some of the, these courses are also taught by international faculty uh, where we kind of club the national and the international faculty together. Uh, can we go to the next slide? Yeah. So I think I have covered most of these. These are some uh, glimpses. Like for example, last year uh, we had a seminar which was concentrating on AI and the issues in AI and school education. And we had uh, MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, basically who was on this campus and their team uh, was on this campus and who delivered this seminars and talks and also workshop uh, for teachers and our students in MA in education and technology. We also have Open University UK where we very closely work with uh, digital badges uh, and uh, yeah, and many other projects that we may not have time to speak about it, but please do follow uh, our handles and also look at our website. Yeah, can we go to the next slide? This is the capstone project that I have explained in a lot of details. Anil, would you like to come in here? Sure. So, yeah. So essentially, capstone, unlike a typical um, research project, it enables you to put all of your learning. I mean, that whatever you learned in this whole um, program, uh, to practical into a practical context. <clears throat> so. Um, Although, you know, one of the other things is that although our focus is uh, more K-12, but we do cover um, higher education and adult learning also in, in our courses. Okay, so even that could, in fact, um, if, uh, if you look at the last batch, which is just graduating, some of them have taken uh, adult learning and higher education uh, scenarios for, for their caption project. You, you select a field site. Uh, first, and, and you also look at uh, what you want to do. So as Amina mentioned, uh, either you could look at creating an artifact and trying it out using a design-based uh, uh, you know, research approach, or it could be more research-oriented, like in, in, in our case, one of our students looked at two different kinds of pedagogies and, and looked at the impact of, of, of those two different kinds of pedagogies on those two groups. So it's a very uh, practice-oriented um, format. Um, and the other thing is you get to create. If you are if you are looking at uh, more uh, uh, more of a design route, you have the option to create something and test it out too. So it's a very intensive, rigorous um, project, but it's something that um, is very useful and very practical and relevant for even the industry. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Anil. Uh, so as we move ahead, uh... Yeah, design-based approach that uh, I think we also touched a little bit. Uh, so these are a lot of uh, basically open educational resources that we the center has created. It has a long history of um, design-based research, design-based artifacts, and then conducting huge usability and learning outcome studies around it. And these resources are there that students use in their courses or they can even pick up for their research. We also have uh, a large field action project uh, in one in Mumbai schools, uh, municipal schools, where we are using education technology, project based learning with technology. And uh, so when the students are on campus, they also do a lot of these field visits uh, uh, in and around. And then uh, we build uh, uh, deeper discussions based on these field visits. I think last year they visited one of the uh, learning design, premier uh, learning design um, company, uh, uh, speaking with a lot of learning designers uh, and product managers there. They also visited project-based learning with technology field in Mumbai schools. They also visited assisted technology and special schools and the kind of technologies these schools use. So, I think um, as we go ahead, we will keep a lot of field action uh, exposure for the students. Yeah, can we go next? Yeah, career prospects. Anil, would you like to come in for the career prospects? 
Yeah, you can go ahead. Uh, yeah. So we have, um, well, my, you know, this is just a, it's just a limited list and can go beyond this. So um, teaching and learning. So you, you could be uh, working in a school space or in or at, um, higher education setup and um, could be a consultant to, to the institution in terms of how education technology is to be used optimally. You product management is a specialization that you do, so you could use those skills to be a product manager in a, at a company or um, or in a, or in any 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 of the development sectors, and uh, also as a project project manager or a program manager. Instructional design, uh, also called learning design or curriculum design, you know these are opportunities that you have not just in education technology companies but also in e-learning companies and also in publishing houses. And then, of course, there is the research aspect, which I mean, I will probably talk about a little more. And and there's also the opportunity for uh, being an entrepreneur, being a social sector entrepreneur too. Um, that's more or less. Sure, thanks. Yeah, um, yeah you can talk about research. I mean, I feel. Yeah, I think uh, a few of our students in this first batch um, really wanted, and uh, not many came from the education background. So this course. Basically, this master's program gave them a bridge to understand education and education technology both as an academic area. And that gave them more confidence to move into a PhD program. So I think uh, a few of the students actually had those objectives, uh, which uh, were research based. So besides Capstone, I think one of the questions that is in the chat board. So a uh, capstone project, what we usually do is we uh, use a workshop approach based on the interest of the students. Uh, we give some workshops on what are the different kind of doing research based on their interest. So if uh, there are more students who are basically designing an artifact, then we go, uh, we uh, spend more time on design based research or if it's more uh, kind of a little bit a traditional aspect, then we go into a traditional research methods. Then we assign a, a faculty a guide with each of the students and they are also allowed to choose a mentor from their field uh, where they would like to take a research. So it's a combination or they can just have a faculty mentor. And then maybe by the third or the fourth one, they start working with this guide and then create a proposal. You can also select because we have about maybe eight, seven to eight projects in education technology. So you can also opt to basically uh, select one of the education technology research project or teacher professional developer field action that CET is doing. And you can work in that setting also to build your capstone project. For example, not in the MAT batch, but we have PhD students who are actually, for example, one of my PhD students in education technology is uh, working in project-based learning with technology with municipal schools and creating a very novel, uh, uh, a comprehensive assessment tool in social emotional learning. Uh, so that is also possible. Uh, I, I don't think uh, this is a very small capstone project. It will not be like a PhD program, but you can do a little bit of data collection to substantiate either a theory or create something uh, in the field and substantiate with uh, systematic data. Uh, yeah. Can we go to the next slide? Yeah. Durba, would you like to cover this uh, next slide after career? Yeah, sure. So uh, being at uh, this campus, uh, there are several uh, options that, you, that are available for you. So uh, you will have the library, which is open uh, till late for you. And many students take opportunity for that to study even uh, late at night. Uh, there are student communities uh, available uh, who are who can help you finding, uh, you know, not only accommodation and other services, but they can help you in any problem that you might face during uh, when you are in campus. Uh, so sessions, uh, in terms of session, the sessions will be, uh, as Amina, Dr. Amina mentioned before, it will be synchronous and asynchronous sessions. And uh, 
uh there will be uh, the capstone will uh, you will uh, be delving into the hands on uh, aspects of the uh, technology and uh, there are other uh, workshops and uh, seminars and uh, uh, research uh, workshops that happen where you can also take part of uh, CET has its own edtech research group who conduct seminar uh, on a regular basis. So you will be able to attend those also. So yeah, thanks, Urba. A, a few of the students also opted to, uh, you know, do part-time internship with CET also with the research projects. Even that is a possible. Yeah, can we go to the next? Yeah, I think we can now pause and take questions. What is the next slide? Yeah, so this is very important slide. MA in Education Technology credits 42. It's a flexible delivery that we will explain. And we've already said that this is also part-time option is available. We recommend two years, but you can complete uh, in three years or maybe uh, max. Uh, yeah, essential at least. So for the eligibility, because this is a one-year master's, uh, Going by the rules of NEP, you should at least have a four-year of an undergraduate degree. And if you do not have a four-year undergraduate degree and you have only three-year undergraduate degree, then you will need another master's uh, to join this course. So that is desirable is at least you should have two years, but it's desirable. It's not essential. Two years of work experience in the area of education or education technology or in general in development sector. Yeah, uh, I think we can pause and take a few questions. Uh, so I, we understand that this year the um, uh, the registration process for all the programs uh, at this have changed. So, uh, so this you can apply for any of the programs at this if you have taken the CUET exam and you have uh, whatever uh, you have scores for that, then you can apply for any of the TISC programs. CUET has become mandatory. Um, once you have your CUET uh, done, then you can register on the TISC PG admission and then you can apply for MA in Education and Technology. You will be required to upload the documents when you uh, apply for this program or for any other program. And then when you are, if you are selected, you will be asked to come for an online uh, personal interview. So these are the three steps. The first, uh, yeah, the first, uh, before this, you should have already taken CUAT exam. Um, yeah. <laughs> Can you go to the next? Yeah, let's just skip and maybe we can pause here and take questions if there are no other slides. There's one question from Sakshi on um, whether all lectures are recorded for students for later reference. Yeah, so uh, we have a lot of flexibility um, in this program. So basically, uh, uh, you know, we hardly have... Uh, classes that we call lectures, you know, our, our classes are highly active. So students are expected to read and come. And uh, since these are mostly working professionals that we see, uh, and they are quite mature students. So uh, classes are based on a lot of discussions, the synchronous classes. Uh, so it depends on the faculty. For example, I also teach social marginalization in this program. And based on the topic on social marginalization, which becomes a little uh, difficult uh, because of, there are a lot of, uh, you know, students also reveal a lot about their lives. So in this class, as a faculty, I decide that I will not allow um, video recording. But in other classes, for example, Anil's class is recorded. He teaches learning design. Uh, product management class. So most of these classes allow recordings uh, and some classes do not allow. Now, if you want to access that recording, then you it's a faculty's prerogative to give you access because we don't want to get into uh, a culture where students miss classes and they just depend on the recording. As I said, our classes are highly active. 
participation is key in our classes. There are debates, there are discussions, there are activities, uh, you know, so it's very, very uh, vibrant, the classes. So uh, unless 75% uh, attendance is compulsory as per TIS norms for any of the programs on TIS, at TIS. So that is very important. But yes, uh, faculty uh, do allow and they share the recordings. Uh, but if it happens multiple times, then it is the faculty's uh, prerogative to, uh, you know, select. Yeah. Okay. Shall we look at more questions or please unmute yourself and ask because it's a small group. Yeah. yeah uh, the one is on 10 week face to face sessions conducted. Are they held in continuity or um, do you do it in different segments? Yeah. So uh, this year, uh, for the full-time students, uh, there will be, for example, three times. If, if you take full-time, that means you will start in August and you will complete by April or May because we are starting late because of CUET. If we start in June, then we end in April uh, or maybe March and the classes end. Now we are starting in August, so we will end maybe by uh, April end or May mid. So between August and April or May, uh, uh, the full-time students will have to be on campus for at least three times. Uh, the part-time students can be on campus two times. So when you come on campus, we will have you come on campus for two weeks, then three weeks, then two weeks, if you are a full-time student. Uh, so that means you will have to speak if you are working even part-time or full-time, then you will have to speak and take prior permission from your employers uh, to be on campus. If you are part-time, then you can come in the start of the prog uh, program and then you can come at the end of the or start of the second semester. And then you can cover your face-to-face uh, -face sessions in the second year. Uh, that means you do not have too much of load to cover everything in the first year. But for the full-time one year, you will have to come on campus at least three times. And there's a question on timings. Yeah, for full-time, obviously, it's a regular yeah. full yeah. day. All our classes start uh, at 5.45 or 6 p.m. Yeah, only uh, after, yeah. yeah. It's mutual, the... basically, yeah, yeah, but right. not after 6 p.m. Our uh, latest our classes start at 6 p.m. and then it ends at around 8.30, 8.30, and the classes that start at 5.30 end around 7.45, 8, yeah. Uh, uh, so, BA DMR integrated program, I have only completed my graduation. That's a question from Vaishnavi Yadav. I have applied for BADM and integrated, but I have only completed my graduation. Huh. So. Yeah, I think we don't have anyone today who is from BADM. So I think if you can email this question on the website, uh, not website, the email ID that is given for CET, someone will reply for that question. I don't think any of us can uh, today uh, reply to that question for BADM. <laughs> Yeah, Vaishnavi, you can uh, join our webinar. Like the next webinar is held on Saturday at 7 p.m., in which all the programs will be covered again. So I think it is better you address the same question there and you will get more information about the program also. Or else I have put in uh, the like contact information in the chat box. So please. So whether you are uh, whether you are joining MA in Education Technology as a part time or a full time student, you all our classes which are regular are online, and it happens only in the evening. Whether you are part time or full time, you will be sitting in the same classes. So all our classes uh, will run uh, for the full time students. The classes are every day. For the part-time students, you it depends on how many credits you have opted for. Your classes will be between two to three days in the evenings in the week. Uh, in the week. Uh, so we don't do classes on Sunday, but uh, Monday to Saturday, we have classes in the evening. Uh, if you're part-time, you will have less classes than the full-time students. So the delivery is the same. Now, for full-time students, you will come on campus 
for two weeks in the start, then uh, in the middle of the year, you will come for maybe three weeks or two and a half weeks. And at the end, you will come for two weeks. For the part-time students, if you want to complete in two years, then you will only come for maybe one week in the start and the one week at the end of the uh, or and you will complete it your uh, full time days on campus in your second year so that's how it is right now yeah. difference between regular and distance schools delphi yeah so that's what i meant to say that for full time and part time the delivery yeah. every day is online only in the right. evening but when you come on campus then you will also have face-to-face -face delivery. That part-time and full-time will have same type of delivery. Certain days will be face-to-face -face in the year. And most of the time, the rest of the days will be online delivery. Yeah. Also days, uh, Sakshi, when you're on campus, when you come for this face-to-face -face sessions, it'll be all the days, all the working days of that week. Yeah. I'm in coaching industry where we have the Campus placements and opportunities. So yeah, we do have a placement cell. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so we do have a placement cell, and our students are also representatives of that placement cell. Um, and we do send out emails to prospective employers, and um, you know if. And you 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 will have the opportunity to you know give an interview or in fact even as part of your capstone you will need to choose a choose a field site so maybe that's another opportunity for you to get an internship post um, post your graduation. Yeah, so a lot of industry partners we have actually wanted students to come and do capstone projects in their. Uh, field sites even this year and there was a lot of demand uh, that students uh, pick up the courses evaluate their courses or create something which is not there or do a usability uh, so that is very much possible to get yourself placed in an industry or a government setup or uh, maybe a development uh, section and uh, and do your capstone within that context. So that is very much uh, encouraged. We have certain tie-ups, as Anil also suggested. Yes, assistance in placement. Uh, we have a very vibrant uh, placement cell at CET. And as Anil said, this is run by the students. And there is a faculty in charge who guide these students. And uh, about seven to eight students basically... Uh, write to employers, then they come to campus in the last semester, they interview the students. And uh, it's a student led and it is a faculty guided kind of an initiative. Yeah. And we have an entire directory of potential employers for all our programs. Yeah. Sure. Any other questions do you have? Vaishnavi, I understand you have already asked your question. There's one on the interview timeline. One question on the interview timeline for the admission process for me. So it looks like uh, if everything goes okay, uh, maybe it will be in June. It could be between say third week and fourth week. And if it becomes very late, it might spill over into July first week. Uh, so I think uh, it's very tentative right now when the interviews will be, but definitely it will be after the second week of June. Yeah, and these are online. Yeah, interviews. And, yeah. and also you'll be just asked to speak um on a topic related to education or education technology yeah, for about yeah. two or three minutes and you will be given time and and um, and then of course there are, there'll be some questions to gauge yeah. your interest but we'll be supportive don't worry about those aspects yeah so i think a few people had also asked what kind of uh, this topics that uh, you will have to so the interview starts with this topic and talking about it so could be issues in education technology, the current issues, uh, the opportunities, emerging technologies, uh, policy in education technology, uh, certain 
uh, maybe uh, certain interventions in education technology and what you think about it, you know, it could be any of these. So look at some contemporary issues in education technology and also opportunities in education technology uh, globally and especially in the Indian context. Yeah, any more questions? You can always email us and ask more questions uh, or if you need any assistance with uh, applying for the course and you are stuck somewhere, please do send an email uh, and someone will respond and, uh, you know, provide support. Uh, even after applying, if you don't hear for an interview, sometimes it happens. It's not that you are not selected, but there is some communication gap. So do not uh, feel shy, but uh, drop in an email and say, I have applied, uh, but I have not heard what is the status of my application. So please do that, uh, you know, because last year we felt a lot of students were on the list, but something went wrong and then they missed the interview. So do not uh, wait, uh, you know, do please ask uh, if you uh, do not hear from us for the interview. So uh, are we there have any recorded today, uh, if you want, uh, the, I think someone just joined, right? Is that Ayush? Uh, Yashwant, I don't remember. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah, so then all the best uh, for your applications and do reach out if you need any support. I think no one is asking about fees. So I think you already know what the fees are or do you have any questions please ask us now or even later for the part-time students your fees get divided you don't have to pay everything in the first year uh, but if you have any questions please let Maybe. me know yeah uh, hi this is Sukanto. yeah sure. uh, I was asking uh, in case uh, I will complete this course in one year and I have to come to the um, to the campus is there any accommodations availabilities there or we have to stay somewhere else? Yeah, we will be getting a hostel facility for that. So what we have done in the for our first batches, uh, uh, we try to call our students, uh, MAET students during vacation time where uh, the other regular students are not on campus. That means uh, we have booked international hostels for our students for that one week or two weeks period or sometimes three weeks and uh, some students opted for guest house facility so uh, this also has a guest house so some students come together and they share a guest house room so that their uh, cost gets shared uh, so even we help them in uh, getting uh, bookings for the guest house which is on campus so it could be a hostel or a guest house. So we try to find the dates of face-to-face -face in such a way that it becomes easier for students to be on campus and get hostel. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so we have limited scholarships for this program, although this is a self-funded uh, program. We have limited scholarships. So once you are admitted, then you can apply for a scholarship. Uh, and then uh, if uh, it becomes competitive, then, uh, and if you qualify based on your economic status, then there will be an interview for the scholarship. Yeah. Uh, Ma'am, there is one more question. Sure. Uh, I applied for this and there is three options that we can apply for three courses mm -hmm. uh, you, what is your first preference and second preference and third preference and i applied for technology first then education then elementary these mm -hmm. are the three courses so i just wanted to know uh, all these uh, courses have different i have to go for different interviews for each and every courses yes yeah the interview panels are very different okay 
Okay, so uh, they will help you so that you do not have the interview at the same time if you are called for the interview. So okay. they will help you with the scheduling. That's not a problem. Yeah, but you have to go through. Every program has a different panel. Okay. Yeah, Sakshi. Thank you. Uh, Ma'am, when I had registered through the portal, I could get only one option that is MA in Education Technology. I didn't get the other two options. And it appeared on the screen that because I had applied through COQ uh, P11 program, so I, and uh, while choosing my PGCU ET course, I applied for MA EdTech course in this. So I okay. couldn't apply for the other courses. So, okay. uh, so, I, I hope there wasn't uh, there wasn't any um, glitch in my application when I was applying. Okay, maybe you write an email to admissions and say that uh, this uh, you opted for MA in education, but now you want to apply for the other two programs also because uh, CPQ eleven you are eligible to apply for other courses also. So just okay. write an email to admissions. Yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. So, uh, what kind of documentation support, Sumit? Hello, good evening, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, good evening. Yes, the bank uh, recommends that uh, these are the install uh, installments. Okay. So the bifurcation of the installment that we can apply to the bank. Hmm. Then the process, uh, we can do the process of the bank. Okay, so then uh, it means that, you know, we can give a letter that you are admitted and these okay. are your fees. Okay. And uh, so that kind of documentation we should be able to give you. That will be a great step. Yeah, sure. Okay, thank you so much, everyone, and all the best. Uh, do let us know if you need any support. Thanks, we can close now. Yeah. Anil Durba, do you have anything that you no. want to add? Yeah. Okay. No, thank I you so much. I best. think we are very much in time. So thank you so much. Thanks. Bye. Thank thank All you. the best. Thank you. Thank you so much, Yeah. Thanks, Navina. Yeah, yeah.